Parkinson's disease treatment. The principal motor symptoms of Parkinsonism are tremor, rigidity and bradykinesia. Gait failure is also a classical feature of Parkinson's disease, although it's normally seen in the later stages of the illness. In addition to the motor symptoms, we come across non-motor problems quite often. These could be split into a number of different areas. Autonomic symptoms include postural hypotension, bladder frequency and constipation. Sleep problems typically consist of fragmented sleep or the presence of REM sleep behaviour disorder. As the illness progresses, many patients with Parkinson's develop cognitive symptoms such as a dementia and the presence of well-formed, detailed visual hallucinations. Pain is increasingly recognised as a non-motor feature of Parkinson's disease. The principal treatment for the motor symptoms of Parkinson's is levodopa. The benefits of levodopa is that it's an extremely effective treatment and it's generally very well tolerated. The downsides are that patients develop motor fluctuations, which mean that they start to become dyskinetic when they're on and they start to freeze and become very bradykinetic when they're off. In addition, levodopa can worsen the cognitive problems associated with Parkinson's. Dopamine agonists are another treatment option and these are available in slow release formulation which means single daily dosing is possible. This is extremely helpful in people who struggle to comply with multiple doses of levodopa during the day. In general terms we see less motor fluctuation with dopamine agonists. However, these drugs are probably less effective and there are other side effects associated with it. Patients can develop impulse control disorder, sleep attacks and we can see cognitive worsening with these medications. So how do we treat motor fluctuations when they occur? Well, we can modify the way we give patients their levodopa. If patients are getting a lot of freezing spells between their doses, we can reduce the time interval between doses. So for instance, if they're taking their medication every four hours, we could bring that down to every three hours. Alternatively, we could add in an extra drug which helps the levodopa last longer. MAOB inhibitors and COMPT inhibitors are examples of such medications. If patients are suffering from dyskinesia, which is too much movement, they can be given a drug called amantadine to help reduce this. If these strategies fail, it's possible to move patients on to more advanced Parkinson's disease treatments such as apomorphine infusions, deep brain stimulation or duodopa. It's worth pointing out that gait failure balance problems and falls are not motor fluctuations and are generally not levodopa responsive. Physiotherapy is in fact the best option for these patients. We do have treatment for some of the non-motor features of Parkinson's disease. So for instance, the autonomic complication of constipation can be readily treated with laxatives. Patients who develop postural hypotension can be helped by advice with respect to adequate hydration, salt intake, and occasionally we prescribe fludrocortisone. It's really important to look at a patient's other medications. Patients with troublesome bladder symptoms could try anticholinergics, although care must be taken because it can cause problems with cognitive side effects. Fragmented sleep or REM sleep behaviour disorder can be treated with clonazepam. Patients who develop cognitive complications of their Parkinson's disease in the form of Parkinson's disease dementia can be treated with cholinesterase inhibitors. Sometimes, for patients who have developed cognitive problems or hallucinations, it's necessary to restrict the amount of dopaminergic medication they're taking. For patients in whom these measures don't work and who are struggling with symptoms of hallucinosis, delusions or other features of psychosis, may need clozapine. This is an atypical antipsychotic that is unique as it doesn't cause significant extrapyramidal side effects.